Hi guys, in this video we'll learn how to create a simple jet tricky rim in 3D. We will go from scratch in 2D all the way to create the 3D model and finally render it. This tutorial has been created by EasyCAD for you and we want to ask you to rate the video and share it if you enjoy. First of all, we will need to create a 2D drawing like this. Although you can start directly with a 3D environment, so let's begin creating these two views with the right measurements of the rim. Initially, we'll use command circle. First point can be anywhere and then the radius is going to be 2 inches. Repeat now circle and select the same center point, but now use for the radius 9 because our rim will be 18 inches high. Now let's use line command and snap at the very center to start creating the spokes of the rim. Remember you can activate ortho mode with FA. Now use rotate command and select again the center as the base point. And instead of using a random number, let's specify the rotation angle to 15 degrees. Now let's use the move command, select the line and use the displacement option to move it 0.5 inches in the y-axis. Use now mirror command. Select again the line and specify the mirror line using also the center point and any point outside on the right using ortho mode to make sure the mirror line is straight. Now we will create lines to close the area between the spokes. So I'll do the first one here. As you see, using ortho mode, I avoid having to select the second point, but then I have to move the line to the right place. Don't worry about the position as long as it touches the other two lines. Oh, let's not forget about the flange, which is not included in the nominal size. So let's use offset with the biggest circle and we'll use the offset distance of 0 0.25 inches and select towards the outside. Now repeat it and select the same circle and use a different distance for offsetting. In this case, use 0 0.5 and do it towards the inside. And again, repeat it with a new circle, specifying now one inch for the distance and also do it to the inside. Now, yes, we'll do the complementary line in the other side. So use the intersection here and move the line down. Now, just move it like with the first one. And finally, let's move those again to position it where we want it. So use the displacement option to move it 0 0.5 inches positive in the x-axis. Do the same for the other one, but use minus 0.5, 0 so it moves negative in the x-axis. Now, let's trim all of this. So use string command and remove the line segments we won't use. And while we're trimming, just want to remind you guys to share the video, subscribe, give a like, and also share your feedback. Now, to end up with the proper shape, let's use fillet command. Specify the radius. In this case, use one inch and select both corners to apply the filleting operation. Of course, repeat it for all the corners and just remember that if you need some help with some of this, all you need to do is post in. So, uh, ask any questions or comments, post it, and we'll be more than glad to answer back. All we need now is to repeat this four times, but command array will do the trick for us. So, use array command. Select the objects, specify a polar array, and use the center of the rim as base point when prompted. Notice as soon as you click on the center, it will generate the default amount of items, so let's change it. You can either pull the menu or use the ribbon, whichever is faster for you. I'll use five items. So this is our product. We're not done yet because we need to do the bold accent decoration. And the actual balls are the center of the rim, in, or in fact, the holes for them, because uh, we're going to put holes here. So we'll use line again and make it go through 
all the rim. Now to place it where we want, just use trim. For the cutting edges, select the circles that are one inch apart and remove the other segments. Now call circle again. Specify the middle point in the line and use a radius of 0 0.2 inches and then remove the line. Now let's distribute it accordingly. So call array command, use polar again, specify the center as the base point, and as we did previously, modify the amount and let's use 25 items. We'll do more or less the same with the holes for the center. So repeat circle command and snap it at the quadrant point here and use 0 0.3 inches as the radius for it. We'll move it now to the inside using the displacement option of the move command add, add minus 0 0.5 comma 0. And finally, we'll do an array again. Hope at this point you can do it on your own. Use polar, specify the center and modify the amount to 5 instead of 6. And our final move is repeating a circle for the axle area at the center. In this case, we will use a radius of 0 0.75 inches and notice that once it's done, we have completed more or less what we need up to here in 2D or 2 dimensional. Our next step is to create a side view of the rim. For that, we will base it in the existing view we have and avoid doing most of the math again. The simplest way is using some reference line as I'm doing here, from the key points of our frontal view. We will only do one half of the view because we can mirror the second half. So I'll do a vertical line for reference on this side. Immediately, I'll offset the line using the through option to some other place farther on the right. Now use command extend, we'll be extending up to the second line, all the horizontal reference lines. And for clarity, we will trim now all the horizontal lines. So use command trim, or as I am doing, you can also trim using extend by pressing the shift key in your keyboard and get rid of the vertical line on your left. Now we'll be drawing partially on top of some of these lines. So I'll be changing the color now to red. So it should be clearly seen which one uh, we are using. For the side view, we'll still need some measurements like the distance between the outer edge of it and the very center where the axle uh, connects. So we'll offset the vertical line towards the left at 2 inches and then again to 1 inch to account for a step in the profile of the rim. Okay, so let's start by using P-Line command. And our initial point should be the intersection at the line, indicating the center uh, 2 inches from the outer edge. Going up, connect to next intersection right above it and now use the arc option of the p-line command now just click right above it to the left now without exiting the p-line command use the line option by clicking it or typing l as i'm doing so we return to its normal use now connect again to the next intersection right above it and then go to the next one on the right move to the one above it and then again to the right to the outer edge now we go up to the intersection above it and to create the flange shape i'll keep going up but we'll enter 0 0.25 inches for the length and we'll enter the same number moving towards the left and then going down you can repeat it or connect to the intersection now I'll keep going to the intersection on the left and after that I'll specify 0 0.5 inches also to the left. Now keep moving down, you do the same and then to the left again I'll click I'll click somewhere over here to pause for a second. What we have here is the outer side of the profile for our rim. Actually we don't need any more uh, the reference lines, so get rid of them. Our next step 
is use fillet command to round up the edges, specify for that a radius of 0.1 inch, and then start selecting the sides, or remember using shift, you should be able to apply the corner shape directly. Or instead, keep repeating the command. You can also select the multiple option of the command to do all the corners in just one operation, so it's your choice. In your case, make sure to do this for every corner, and of course, we have to draw a line for the very center of the rim. And for this, any length is fine. Just use common sense so it won't be too big. Now let's indicate the depth of the rim, and I'll do it using a reference P-line from the outer edge. Going down, I'll click anywhere, and then I'll extend my line to the left 5 inches. Now we'll mirror this shape vertically to get the interior part of the rim. Now select the object, hit enter. We need to indicate the mirror line, but since we have ortho mode active, use this endpoint as the initial point for the mirror line, and then click anywhere, up or down, to complete the mirror line. Now select the object and stretch the line here up to the point where it meets the other section. Since we won't use the bottom part of the new object, we'll trim it. And for that, we have to create a line to work as a cutting edge. I'm going to draw mine here and call trim command to eliminate the bottom part. Remove also the line and now we keep going with line or p-line to the right. From now on, I won't use measurements, but you can use 2 inches and then going down 3 inches or something close to it. Now to create what is going to be the center part, let's use command arc. And I'll use two random points to make a nice and smooth arc. Then I'll repeat the command, but we'll create the arc inversely. Remember that you can also use here exact measurements, but since I don't have them for the inside part, we'll use random numbers. Now let's fillet the edges again, and for that we will use the same 0 0.1, okay? That comes up by default or not, because for this place here it's almost nothing. So let's repeat it and use 0 0.5 for the radius. Now that's better, and of course eliminate the little arc left behind. Let's close our profile. We call ex uh, extend command, select both the arc and the bottom line, and extend both of them. So they close the shape. Well, friends, this is it for today. I hope you like what you learned. Remember, don't forget to rate the video. The next part is going to be aimed to teach you how to create a 3D starting from this. So again, thanks for watching and see you next time.